Hey guys, Cutter here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be playing some Elder Scrolls Legends. Uh, so I, f I figured with the recent announcement from Bethesda that they were going to be putting this game into hibernation mode, i.e. they're not developing any content for it for the foreseeable future. Uh, and with, like most of the player base taking that as a sign that they're going to be shutting the game down at some point. Um, I decided it was probably high time I get back into this game. I haven't played this game competitively, like or laddered competitively in like a year and a bit. So it's, it's been a hot minute. Uh, but when they had made that announcement, they released a small, like, free expansion of cards for everyone. And uh, one of those cards is in this deck right now. So uh, this is the deck I piloted to Legend this month. I climbed all the way from rank 12 to Legend with this. I entered uh, Legend two days ago. I've played only a handful of games in Legend rank. Uh, I think I entered at Legend, like, 540-something. Uh, currently, I am sitting at Legend rank 500 on the dot. Uh, so this deck is basically five power tribal. We are a kind of a mid-range uh, Dagoth deck, or like a very greedy mid-range Dagoth deck that's revolving around the Red Mountain, which has quickly become like one of my favorite cards in the game. It's so much fun to play with. Um, but the entire idea of this deck is just trade one for one resources like super early on in the game, land a Red Mountain and start doing crazy value plays late in the game with these huge creatures. Uh, that are just very difficult to consistently answer. Um, so like I said, the deck is a Red Mountain deck, as you might have assumed. Uh, we're running a lot of payoffs for this kind of stuff, like Blood Dragons, Hands of Dagoth, Created Crush Giant, Lyrus, Sales for Storms, Televoss Manager to keep us alive. During to Sovereign Guard is probably the most out of place card in this deck. It's in here because this is actually my favorite card in the game. <laughs> I put it into like every deck I possibly can just because I think it's so like silly and it's so much fun to play with. Wilds and Karen is just a fantastic card. Uh, it wasn't a card I was ever really keen on before. This deck, like, it saw play in mid-range and stuff like that, but I never really took to it personally. But this deck has really shown me how good this card is. Fantastic card. Uh, it's, it's Encano. It's blue Tazcad. <laughs> we also have the real Tazcad. Uh, Dagoth Earth, it's a Dagoth deck. We're, we want some big creatures. We're, we're, we've got payoffs for that, so we're running Dagoth as well. Mulamnir is my gate killer versus invade. Uh, this card genuinely is possibly the best card in our deck in the invade matchup. Uh, it's so good. But oh yeah, I should probably say something. I should probably like let you guys know what, what I faced on my climb. Primarily, I was playing against invade, a goblin scout, tribunal control, and just like random chaff that was just piles of cards with Munda stones in them. Um, don't play Munda stone. It's a bad card. I, I promise you now, if you take Mundestone out of your deck and put something more consistent in, you'll win far more games. Stop playing Mundestone on ladder, please. <laughs> but yeah, this deck's matchups are relatively good. Uh, against aggro, the sheer volume of guards and our big drains, things like da Hand of Dagoth, Queen Baron's Eye, and Dagoth Earth, if we get to him, uh, stabilize us very nicely alongside things like Unstoppable Rage. Um, against Invade, we have Lethals and Archer's Gambits to take out a gate that's been over invested into. We have Mulamnir, which can just straight up kill any gate, or like most gates. Uh, and we have just big creatures that stick into the shadow lane that our opponent can't really deal with in that deck, which is super good. So our invade matchup is surprisingly good. Obviously, you're inclined to get high rolled out of some games just because that's the nature of an invade with the whole random keyword thing. Uh, but other than that, it, the deck is actually surprisingly good. I think I only lost like one invade deck on my climb. Uh, and I think the final matchup that's really relevant is Tribunal Control. You'd think a deck that's relying on a support or built around a support will lose to a deck with the most support removal in the game. Not the case. Uh, very simply in that matchup, Red Mountain is just... It's, it's more or less base. <laughs> You're hoping them, that they spend like an Edict of Azure on it. Because an edict spent on a Red Mountain is an edict not spent on like a Lyris or a Sales Through Storms. Tribunal Control doesn't have the... Sorry, I literally had to restart my sentence. I just started vomiting words. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Tribunal Control doesn't have the required like answers consistently. They don't have consistent answers to our consistent threats. Eventually, they run out of answers and we start sticking huge creatures, they lose. It's it's very, very simple. The matchup is surprisingly good. It's surprisingly favorable for us. 
there's very few things a tribunal player can do to kind of upset us. And even if they do manage to like upset us or they trade one for one with everything we play during the game, and if it goes like super late, super grindy, we have Journey to Sovereign Guard as a basically I win card in that matchup, which is fantastic. Uh, Goblin Scout isn't too bad for us either. Uh, we have enough early game. We have enough like ways of dealing with their stuff early on. Fireballs, we've got Gambits. They play a lot of one health small dudes. Warcrafters can value trade. They're very weak to the curse effects. Sadly, that's like the big downside. But that doesn't matter too much in the late game when you're starting to like slam Hands of Dagnots, you're starting to slam Cradle Crush Giants, uh, you're starting to like tear the board apart with Mulamnir, with Wilds and Carrots. So overall, this deck's matchups across the metagame, or at least the metagame I experienced personally, is fantastic. It lost very few games for me on my climb. Uh, normally, it was just variants, me not drawing certain cards in certain matchups. Uh, but for the most part, the deck is relatively consistent. And it functions really well, even without Red Mountain, just as a mid-range deck slamming threat after threat. Uh, Red Mountain more or less just allows you to play two and three threats per turn. So, yeah. But yeah, I think this deck is genuinely very well suited in the current metagame. I think it has its place. Um, it, it certainly has like some weak points. Sometimes you can just draw all the big things in none of your early game which can suck, but you're normally aggressively mulliganing for your 1 and 2 drops anyway. Uh, notably, you could probably be running more drain than I am, uh, but I found this list to be pretty balanced as far as it, as far as it goes. Uh, but yeah, that's that's basically the, all there is to say about the deck. Uh, it's a blast to play. It's one of the most fun decks I've played in this game. Um, and yeah, onto some games. All right. Okay, we're actually exactly Legend rank 500. <laughs> okay, I haven't played too many games since I hit Legend. I hit Legend like two two days ago, I think. It's currently 26th, I hit Legend 24th, so yeah, two days. So I haven't played that many games in Legend. Of all the games I've played, I think I've lost like one. Hopefully, hopefully this video doesn't increase that number. <laughs> Alright, Tribunal Control more than likely. All right, we need to find two drops. We need to find two drops. Now the thing is, ooh, this is an iffy hand. We have to think about playing, or potentially playing a Red Mountain on four, and whether or not it's going to get removed. I'd prefer if it didn't get removed, but it getting removed isn't the worst thing in the world. Again, we have to draw it first before we think about that. Uh, I can ring Vigilant Ancestor into Ring Berserker. Get some card draw online. It does give him something to start burning removal on. Which I think I'm okay with. A bolt and a vigilant ancestor is a bolt not spent on a cradle crush. And I think I'm okay with uh with keeping a cradle crush alive later in the game at the cost of this ancestor. Oh, it's a more uh it's a more creature based version. Uh, I would play Gambler, but Gambler is, like, guaranteed to eat a Channel Storm. So you just go to Berserker here and we get some card draw online. And again, this incentivizes them to use some removal. And like I said, more removal they use early on, the less removal they have available late game. Piercing Jav. Jav on a 3-3. Not bad. Uh... I have to consider what I want to pitch here if I want to play this Gambler. Like, Gambit, I don't think is that impactful this game. Again, they're playing a more creature-focused build, so they could be running things like the gods, like Vivek, um, Alexia, that kind of stuff. So maybe we do need to keep the Gambit just in case. So maybe I pitched a Shadow Shift here, although I'd, I would like to play Gambler and Shadow Shift it, just cycle two cards. I don't want to get rid of the Rage, I don't want to get rid of Byron Zaya either, just in case of Mad America. Bolt is also too valuable. He's also at Ice Storm mana. Yeah, I'm just going to play this over here. I'm going to pitch Shadow Shift. He is on Ice Storm mana, so he can just storm me out here, kill both my creatures. I wouldn't be surprised to see it. For the 
If he's guarding here, there's potential that my gambler is surviving. Oh, yes, it is. Sweet. Alright, that's big. That's huge for us. Oh, hello. That's a very good draw. See, him leaving this 5-4 up is actually pretty good for me. We also get a full value Wilds Incarnate next turn. Yeah, he's playing a very strange build. Another piece of hard removal gone on a relatively inconsequential creature. You'll love to see it. How much... Alright, so yeah, this Wilds Incarnate is going to draw us up to 9. Uh, he is on Dawn's Wrath mana next turn. So I'm going to split the lanes a little bit. Oh, look at all this card draw. We could potentially eat a uh, Hallowed Death Priest here, though. So Dagother, I don't think, is going to be lasting this matchup. Ooh, shouts. Hello. Nagleave. Hmm. The Gleave. The Gleave is an issue. Or is the Gleave an issue? I can actually Queen over here to give this guard back. I need to start spending cards on my hand because I want to play this uh, this other Wilds Incarnate at some point. Although I get the feeling I'm going to have a rune broken by then. Maybe I just Fireball play Blood Dragon. Maybe incentivize him to Dawn's Wrath me. That way if he doesn't do it, I can at least kill it with Blood Dragon. Maybe Mulamnir. Yeah, I'm just going to Blood Dragon over here. This is just more removal bait, essentially. Sarayoni. So it's an 8-8 eight, eight Drain Guard that can't be targeted. That's fine. What? Why would you not give it to the Nahagleave here? Or is he counting on me breaking his runes at some point? Probably. Actually, now that I think about it, probably. So we're at 9 cards in hand. We still technically can't play this Wilds Incarnate without milling ourselves. We do get to kill the Nahagleave, which I'm happy enough with. I will give this back guard, though. Play the 3-2. Again, baiting out either Ice Storm or Dawn's Wrath. Because we're coming to the point in the game where we want to be slamming huge creatures. Which Wilds Incarnate will hopefully find us. Penisoc Lattice taking the drain. Yeah, he's running a, a more creature-focused build. I think he's running these just for a synergy with or, uh, Ordinary Necromancer. That's my guess, at least. Piercing Twilight, sure, I'm probably hitting my Wilds Incarnates. Oh, the Blood Dragons. They, every time they take Blood Dragon, Blood Dragon isn't that big of a threat. Sure, it's a big body with a cool effect, but it doesn't do anything when it hits the board. Yet everyone is so afraid of it. Alright. Yeah, we, we're Wilds Incarnate. We're, uh, we're playing Wilds Incarnate here, I think, just to get the value. He does potentially mill me a card, though. I think I'm okay with that. Okay, he's not milling me a card anymore. That's fine. I'm just trying to keep my hand size down a bit. Also, we've got all three bolts in hand, which is, uh, which is fun. Okay, I thought that was the, uh, Hollow Death Priest. Is he playing Singleton? He might be playing Singleton. If he's playing Headless Zombie, he's probably on Singleton. You're so sweet. I just eat you up. 
No, he's not, because he's played two penalty stock last agents. What am I saying? By the light of the three. He's playing two agents, so he's not on Singleton. He does get back to Nahagleave, though. No he drains a bit. I can start hitting him. I have the potential to cast a Mulam near here. Is it worth it? Probably not. Because I can Mulam near the Nahagleave, leaving me on a 9 1. That opens me up to a big ice storm, though. He's only got four cards in hand, though. By my honor. I can't attack him again without breaking a rune, so I'm just gonna cycle some cards, I think. Which an ancestor. I don't want to commit too much now to the Shadow Lane, just because he's probably okay with just Dawn's Wrathing it. He's not losing much in the exchange, so I don't want to commit too much to it. I do need to start thinking about killing him though. This is 12 damage in hand, another 8 from Dagothur, that's 20 damage. If I can get him to 20. Now the Vigilant Ancestor does nothing on the board. It's still probably better I play it, right? Yeah, I need to get him down towards 20. There's the Gleave. Or the Ving, sure. Wardcrafter. Yeah, this is why I was trying to keep my hand size down. Right, I can move them near. Or I can start spending bolts on face. <laughs> What's the play here? I can't set him to to low enough this turn. I could potentially a Mulamnir. I could potentially Mulamnir Gambit. Cause he's he's inclined to just play out the Nagleave to block it, right? Hmm. Like this, I'm not worried about the the other thing. It draws, it does draw me like a bunch of cards, so I need to spend some stuff out of my hand here. It draws me what two cards, so I need to spend at least three, which I can't do. I feel like Mulam near here is a mistake. Yeah, Mulam near there was a mistake. This is gonna get jabbed. I had to play something there. So I can I can only hope to hit a prophecy here, it's not mill. There it is. If he just gleaves and passes, do I win? I don't know. We're at 12 mana. You can cast two bolts and a gambit with that. Another piercing twilight taking... Probably hands of Dagoth. Which I am sad about. Yeah, hand is such a good card. Arrowstorm. Have you got removal for this Nahagleave? Or not Nahagleave, but this. Right. This is 9. Te technically 10 with the Gambit if I poke him in the face. No, it's only 18. It's not quite enough. Although Dagothur does some stuff. See, if I do this now, I lose my Mulamnir, but I get a Dagothur instead. Yeah, I can full clear with Ur. Is it worth it, though? It might be. I can also just Rage, full clear the board. 
What am I developing alongside it if I rage? Nothing. I do get 9 damage through though, because I can also gambit. Maybe it's worth. He's at 16, so I can kill him with double bolt Dagoth Ur if he doesn't answer this stuff. Again, if he just spends his turn developing Nogli, we can Dagoth Ur through it. I get one damage breakthrough, which is dangerous because I could trigger a prophecy. So maybe I just swing with the Warcrafter first next turn, see if he gets a prophecy. Yeah. There might be removal here. It's unusual to not have seen, like, more of it by now. I don't think I'm concerned. I might just... I might just bump here or kill this with the Slay Trigger and go face with Ur. Just because that puts him in lethal range of the balls. Wow, no prophecies. That's crazy. There is a chance he's running Zivkins, though. If he's running Zivkins, I'd be surprised. There's a Mummify up the top. <laughs> Dagoth are always just getting hit by Mummify. It's fine, though. He's done his job. Finally kills Melamnir. Yeah, we kill him even through a Zivkin. Third Bolt just does it to him. Yep, Tribunal Control just felled. Just too many big things and not enough removal. So, just goes to show, like, there's so many things that need to be answered in this deck. It's also a very long match. It was like 15 minutes of a game. 4 5 5. Nice. Alright, I'm gonna play one more just because that uh, that Tribunal game was. It was long. <laughs> oh, we, we somehow went up in rank. <laughs> okay, interesting. Um. Assassin is more than likely burn. I'm gonna keep a turn two corner club gambler just on the off chance that this is aggro. Alright, I need to be very careful what I do here. I can ring ring, play this out on three. Cradle Crush, if this is aggro, Cradle Crush is going to be huge. Oh, whoops. <gasps> uh, no, not that one. There we go. I was doing something, but I was, I was checking the uh, the footage of the last match between rounds. Just to make sure nothing happened, because I had a problem not too long ago with um, with some quality settings. So I had muted the, the menu music while I was checking the footage. That's why that was muted. <laughs> yes! Tis in fact aggro. Alright. He's gonna pitch one credit crush. We don't need all of them. This is more than you're gonna get like hit with a crushing blow. Would my guess. Potentially channel the storm. If he's that kind of a deck. But seeing a 4-2 here, just it's definitely aggro burn. Oh man, look at all this food for our fucking Cradle Crush. <laughs> Another Cradle Crush, sure. Um, I don't think I want to bump him. You bet on the wrong side. So I'm gonna actually just trade, hold back the uh, the Marsh Blade, and I'm just gonna shackle down this four two. We're just going to bide our time until we can Cradle Crush into Cradle Crush, because Assassin's main stat line is 4-2. Like, I'm expecting to see, like, Camlorn heroes and stuff like that come out of this deck. I see you're in need Ooh, I should have hit him. Oh, rolls high on that. Feels bad. Although Dagoth is also pretty fucking insane. Oh. 
Oh, do I hit him? I'm gonna hit him. I swear I'm gonna hit him. Not punished. Good. Get a hand of Dagoth down. I'm gonna send this Dagoth face if I can. He might shackle it though. There it is. Whoop, there it is. Was incarnate. Won't be drawing us cards this game, but is a relevant blocker. Sorry if I keep using magic terminology. I've been playing a lot of magic. <laughs> yeah, the Cradle Crush coming up in a couple of turns looks pretty good. Firebolt, also pretty sick. But what we're going to do is we're just going to shackle this down. I'm actually going to firebolt this now, draw a card. This is also very relevant because I can ping the ward off this to get the value trade. I'm more inclined to trade this here than to this, just because the breakthrough damage will give him a card. I come bearing gifts. Ah. That's fine. I'm okay with that, actually. I'm very okay with that. Gonna bump here. We're gonna... Archer. Now, I'm gonna hold back this. We might find a Gambit at some stage. Werebat. Takes it up before it can draw me a card. Smart. Another Elder Gleam Matron. Hopefully he just plays it. No luck in that turn, sadly. In my Bump him down. Play Wilds and Karnas, just as a big blocker. The big old guard. The moose. The moose is in. Next turn we can Cradle Crush and Thieves Guild Recruit. So if he plays a bunch more like two health creatures, we can just blow him out of it. Everything was taken from me. To break oh hello, that's that's a big one. Uh I might just bump that in Cradle Crush. Again, he's getting low on resources. If I had a ward crafter, this would be so much better because I could ward this back up. We're going to avoid giving me a card for now. I don't want to I don't want to keep pressuring his face. I want to keep pressuring his board state instead until we find another drain. I come bearing gifts. See the courier sure to get through my guard. Out of my Cliff racer probably. <laughs> Mudcrab ankle snapper. That's just in the deck. You madman. Sacrificing the zero one. Red mountain. Yeah, sure. He's down to one card in hand. We have effectively ran him out of resources here. Alright, now we can start flooding the board with big things. Blood Dragon's a pain in his ass. Turns out, when a Blood Dragon costs three mana, it's insane. Alright, he's gonna start trying to burn me up here. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of this Firebolt, I think. I think Firebolt's the least relevant card in our hand here. We're not dead to any two card combo. Like, uh, Kinsman plus Drain Life, or whatever it's called. Blood Sacrament is only seven. Which doesn't kill me. Yeah. So he sets me to two here. Okay. I bark and burn. This is interesting. We're looking for a hand of Dagoth. 
Wilamnir, not really relevant here. Now we could just potentially be dead to the top of his deck, which is going to be unfortunate. Yeah, if we die to the top of his deck, it's just going to be unfortunate. Alright, what kills us? Uh, Camlorn Hero kills us. Uh, Bolt kills us. Another Blood Sacrament kills us. There's a lot of ways Assassin has of uh, dealing 2 damage. We are protected against Cliff Racers. I've drawn as many cards this turn as I possibly could to try and find an out. Hopefully he doesn't top deck me. Don't be it, come on. One time. One time, come on. He's counting up how much damage I have. So this is potentially not lethal. Like, I'm perfectly okay with just raging my own lane for life gain. I think that's a, a relatively fair line of play for me. Potent like, given that I don't die here, Cliff Racer, thank god, okay. We were protected against that. Talvas, yes! That means we don't die to any single top deck he has. I will cut your purse. Perhaps we can help one another. Okay. Not... Alright, Talvas means we don't die to a single card anymore. Cliff Racer to Cliff Racer, Talvas saving us here right now. I still don't want to give him cards. Not until I find some form of drain. Just because potential of two card combo is just killing us. That's probably a drain blood. Baroness. Baroness doesn't allow us to drain, sadly. Another Televoss. Tazcad. This is so dangerous right now. Like, if this is Drain Blood, <laughs> like, anything he draws kills us, basically. Which I think it is if he's holding it, because the Betrayer Trigger just kills us. So do we just try and kill him now? Like, I think we have enough damage to kill him. The only prophet. Actually, no, I don't think any prophecy kills us here. He needs to hit exactly two bolts. We've seen one. This is 10, 18, 24, yeah. We'll just go for it. You bet on the wrong side. Oh boy. Harpy doesn't save him. I still have enough damage. GG's. Ho! Oh. Burn Assassin not quite making it. I'm pretty sure what he top decked there was a Drain Life or a Blood Sacrament or whatever it's called. Oh boy, that was really close. <laughs> GG though. Oh, so close to 420. Damn. <laughs> Fuck it. Oh well. Right. Not quite the meta game I was talking about being goblins and invade, but we did get the tribunal matchup. We did get a burn assassin, so like the deck is fine against aggro. Um, if not a bit close, it was a bit hairy. I will admit. Uh, him being able to remove that um, that hand of Dagoth like that, that turn, that really kind of uh, set the pace for that game. Right, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know in the comments below, actually, what you've been playing. Uh, for those of you who, like, have been playing Legends, just let me know what you've been playing. Uh, let me know what decks you'd like to see, because I've been, um, I was messing around with, like, a Merrick Battle Mage build that was doing surprisingly well on ladder, also had a solid matchup against Invade, um, which I might try the legend claim with next month so yeah like i said uh let me know what you'd like to see let me know what you've been playing and uh let me know if you want to see more legends as well because i might i'm considering while i'm back playing the game may as well just make content for it i've been streaming this game uh two or three times a week over my twitch channel link is in description if you guys want to check that out uh, i recommend it there's a lot of memes and stupid shit that goes on so uh so stop by but uh until next time peace out